Welcome to the Cisco ASA Fundamentals series. My name is Ahmad Mukhtar and I'll be your instructor throughout this course. Today we're going to be focused on simply basic firewalls and the transition of firewalls from the PIX firewall towards the FTT. Oh and by the way, adding to all that, I'm going to be performing labs on the ASAs and I'm not going to be using ASDM for that, okay? So don't worry about that. So let's move on to our first slide of the day. So here is our learning checklist. What does a firewall do in general? We will be looking at that. And the concept of an IPS, the things you need to know about the IPS in general. Then we'll be seeing the in-demand topic, which is PIX versus the ASA versus ASAX versus FTT. The question comes into mind that why did Cisco change these series I mean, from PIX to ASA, from ASAX to FTD? Why did that transition happen in the first place? We will be looking at that too. So what does the network firewall do in general? That is the question. Whenever you deploy a firewall, the first thing that you need from it is what? Security, right? From what exactly? from attackers, the people who are trying to compromise your systems. I'll be explaining that with an example over here. Okay, so I just went ahead and grabbed my pen over here. And let me emphasize what I'm really trying to say here. Supposedly, you have this home network. This may be your company. And you have this web server sitting here and you want people to access it or the internet. Now, anyone sitting on the web can access your web services right that is what you want okay so some people like this guy sitting over here is trying to get inside of your network and get to the server and trying to hack it some way one way or another we're not focusing on the way he's trying to do it so what do you expect from the firewall when things like these are going to happen hmm that's a good question. Well, your firewall should have a pair of spectacles and should be able to see packets as they go through the firewall getting towards the server. So what you would need is IPS capabilities on your firewalls. Now it's not for free normally. You need to buy a subscription, a module, depending upon the vendor you bought the firewall from. Anyways, other attacks may include DOS attacks, denial of service attacks, in which the hacker is gonna flood your web server with sin so much that your CPU and memory of this web server will be bogged down. And legit users like these won't have any more access of your web services. That's what they can do. The firewall services can stop that to some extent you can say hey I want that specific IP no matter what IP should be limited to only six connections and not, not more than that the seven should be dropped um, you can mitigate some kind of attacks with the, the basic firewalls um, but not all kind of attacks if you want to dig deep into a packet you need an IPS capable firewall Okay, what's an IPS then and how it works? The only simple example I'm going to show you right now, just keep in mind the previous example that we were discussing. Supposedly, you have that web server sitting here. This is the web server. And people or anyone tr is trying to access it. Now, this may be your firewall. Maybe this IPS is built into your firewall. Or maybe you have this as a physical appliance. You can have both, by the way. IPS comes in hardware and software modules or hardware and software appliances as well. So when the packet comes in, the IPS has to inspect it using its spectacles or quote unquote the magnifying lens and see the packets. It sees the packets as they go towards the server over here and it matches to a signature database that it has from an IPS cloud. Now what this signature database is and what you need to know right now is this is basically a pattern of attacks. There are millions of these signatures that signify, okay, if a packet is coming through your firewall in such a pattern or, or it has this malicious data stream in it, 
then it's a HTTP re-exec attack or maybe it's an R code attack SQL injection attack it could be any attack now how do you uh, update those signature databases from an IPS cloud so what does it do when it says hey you know what this packet is malicious what should I do with it well you drop it that's the most obvious thing to do is you drop the packet right you drop the packet because it seems like a malicious packet and it most probably is because obviously you have this gigantic database of signatures to verify it okay here comes my favorite part the Cisco firewalls transition let's look at PIX first the PIX was the first Cisco firewall and was pretty good at its time but the technologies do evolve quickly and we have to adapt accordingly so the demand came in that hey you know what we need IPS capabilities because cyber crimes are increasing day by day and Cisco had to discontinue the PIX firewall in around 2008 demand came up that hey you know what we need IPS services we need a robust IPS so Cisco said hey you know what you can buy our Cisco IPS appliance why not that but you know it takes a lot of doing because you have to place it in line of your network and more on that later but the thing is people needed hey you know what we're purchasing a firewall we need a service of an IPS inside of the firewall and that is the new deal so Cisco didn't disappoint obviously and they came out with their Cisco adapted security appliances double five double zero series in this series the most noticeable thing was their modular IPS now this modular IPS has different amount of specs they have different models for different hardwares so they come with their own flash they come with their own RAM so the processes have been offloaded just like a PC having a graphical card so the demand came up after the Cisco ASA appliances were people demanded that we need application visibility and control and URL filtering alongside IPS and that was a big demand application visibility and control what does that mean just to give you an example if you ever use Facebook and I doubt if you haven't Facebook has many things you can do on it you can update status you can chat you can like a specific post a picture anything you can go ahead and block a user's capability to like a post or you can block a user's capability to update status now that is an example of application visibility and control just keep that in mind what's URL filtering oh that's pretty simple you can block categories for example you say hey you know what job categories in my organization should be blocked gambling should be blocked you can uh, call in categories and block them per user base or per IP based so that was in demand so Cisco had to do something about it again now Cisco did do something about it and they introduced their next generation firewalls the Cisco 5500X series with context security. Now, how did they do that? They had hard disks inserted inside of their firewalls, or more specifically, SSD drives inserted inside of their firewalls. Now, you can install this operating system on top of this SSD drive and use them as an IPS application visibility and, and control and URL uh, filtering let me show you how it happens you have this ASA it could be any ASA they have this SSD drive and on that SSD drive you have that context where module installed now what happens is the packet comes inwards towards an interface of the ASA the ASA says hmm I have a class map that matches this packet and I have to put you through the context security module and inspect it the context security module inspects the packet with IPS if you have that enabled a URL filtering rules and uh, AVC rules if you have them and if it's allowed 
it says to the SAA, allow it to pass through. If it's denied, it says to the SAA, please drop the packet and ESA drops the packet. So that's how they implement context security. So that was just a flyby overview. There's a lot to it, okay? So just one thing I have to tell you about it, that the demand just beats everything else. Now the demand came up that, hey, you know what? We just don't need application visibility control IPS and URL. We need AMP services as well. Yikes, we got, we got a problem here. So we had to implement AMP solution as well. What is an AMP? That was the question of the day. Just to keep it look very simple, you go ahead, if you want a software, you go ahead on Google and search, hey, I need a software that could generate hashes. You go towards the internet and you type in that in Google and the Google gives you a ton of links uh, for the, that software and you're a normal user. You don't know uh, what that software is going to do to your computer. You just need that software, right? So you download that software from the internet and you install that software and you don't have no idea what that software is going to do to your computer or the network. So the firewall kicks in and says, you know what, I will see myself that how that software is. I mean, is it malicious or not? If it's malicious, I'll drop it in line. If, it's, if I don't know it, that it's malicious or not, I'll go to the cloud, the AMP cloud, and, and talk to it and say, hey, you know what, hey, AMP cloud, how are you doing? Here's a file kindly uh, see if this file is good or bad and based on that uh, response if you've configured to let the file pass through towards the client this is the PC and if he has installed the software then it's obviously infected if it's infected this firewall will notify the admin that hey uh, a software came up in your network and we think it's bad you should go and check this specific computer because I got the IP address and user information. And the administrator walks up to your desk and says, excuse me, sir, I need your laptop. I need to see something. And you're like, okay, go ahead. So that's what happens. So this is AMP. So what did Cisco do about the AMP? Let's see. Cisco acquired a company named Sourcefire. Now, you all know the name, right? It's been in the industry for quite a some time now. Now, Sourcefire was a company that was operating in all the four regions, IPS, uh, URL filtering, uh, AMP services, application visibility and control, all of that. It was operating very good and Cisco acquired this company. So when they acquired this company, they said, okay, we had these SSD drives, right? Installed in our firewalls. We can erase the software of context security and we can install the OS of the SFR inside of it and operate the same way the context security was operating. The only difference is that now we have AMP services as well. That's pretty neat. So now, what was the demand now? You might be thinking right now because I have this blue box right down. Uh, but the thing is, it's not a demand. It's a need that you need throughput. Now the only problem I see in firewalls that Cisco has implemented over the past years is throughput. Throughput because the way ASAs are implemented, we have this ASA and we have this SFR or context security or IPS module. And the packet comes in, goes towards the a SFR, it processes it, process it, it and uh, if it's okay to let go, it let go of it and forward the packet. But the problem is the throughput gets compromised right here, right here. So they can't go above a specific throughput. Now, if I had to jog it down right here, I'll say the PIX firewall that I have seen in a small business environment, uh, the throughput maximum is 100 Mbps. The double five, 10 series, has a maximum throughput of 300 Mbps. The 5566, it has a throughput of 900 Mbps, and that's good for a small business, I think so. But they came up with another 
fireball that ha that, that is a darling of Cisco right now and um, that is the FTD fireball now the FTD fireball if you can see the last uh, star marked that is FTD fireballs for small business have a throughput of up to 2.8 gigabits per second man that's insane that's insane just compared to those throughputs I mean that's 10 times better not ten, uh, yeah around about 10 times so <laughs> oh my god I mean that's amazing so they implemented basically FTD firewalls and what FTD firewalls are all about is they basically picked up the best of ASA features and the best of SFR features and built a hardware module of them but best of both worlds they call them so it's pretty neat it has quite a lot of features and the best thing about it it now has a built-in GUI cheers because ASDM was a very pain well, a big pain but basically because you had to have that specific Java version on your computer you had to have that specific version on the firewall it was a hassle so this is pretty neat now that you have a GUI they call it the FDM the firepower device manager so we will be having a course on all of this so don't worry about that so let's just finalize this dose this doctor's dose for today so learning checklist preview what does a firewall do you can say okay I have understood a little bit okay what a firewall does the concept of an IPS mm -hmm, got that and why the transition of all the picks and ASAs and FTDs got that too so thank you for watching my video and stay tuned for more like comment and subscribe thank you